Okay, so let's uh, switch over now to the mobile device manager side of things. So before we actually get into the enrollment process for this, I wanted to run through these uh, prerequisites. So these are things that we can call out for you to make sure you have in place before you actually get to um, uh, a scenario where you're ready to enroll the devices. So there are um, two parts to this. There's the, the prerequisites themselves, and then there's the, the actual uh, setup routine uh, through the cloud-only configuration. And then David will go through the configuration for the unified MDM setup. Prerequisites are common. Then I'm going to show you the cloud-only setup routine for um, uh, Intune. And then David will go through the unified MDM setup. OK, so uh, I talked this morning briefly about this, um, this direct management channel that we're opening up. So in here, what I want to do is give you a, a kind of a real heads up about what that actually means. So at the point a direct management communication is set up or a channel is set up between our service and the device that we're managing, you're inheriting the policies, the uh, ability to deploy applications to that device. Um, that communication is occurring directly to the, the device without any other infrastructure in the way or without any other applications in the way. If I switch to this next channel, uh, uh, next uh, picture, what I've got here is uh, two distinct columns of direct management versus EAS management and a comparison of the, the key pieces here. And one of the things that I wanted to highlight right up front is this security layer here. So, as far as direct management is concerned, we are opening a channel up to the operating system of the device. Now, in the case of Windows Intune and Windows uh, Phone 8, we're doing that with the management agents built into the device. Um, and it's actually using a protocol that's well established and that we, we've been using for many years in, uh, in the mobile space called OMADM. And it's our, our APIs to allow us to manage each of those platforms directly from the cloud service. In the case of iOS, we integrate with the Apple Push Notification Service. They have a service that, um, that supports their management channel, and we integrate directly with that and communicate directly to it. And that's key, because if you compare that to what's actually going on in an EAS-managed device, we're relying on the mail client on that device that is EAS compliant to tell us the truth. And unfortunately, there are examples of, um, let's say, bad or rogue mail clients that um, can lie to EAS. So at the front end, it's saying, yes, yes, I'm, I'm EAS compliant. I'll do everything that you ask of me. And we're allowing the connection to set up. But on the back end, they're implementing none of them on the OS. So through an EAS managed channel, we don't really have control of what's happening at the OS level. We're relying on the EAS client to be good, and nice, and tell us the truth. And that's how we can manage the device. So this is why direct management channel is such a key component of this release. We want to have that guaranteed path regardless of what applications are running. So uh, the capabilities that, um, that are uh, lit up between the two, we have um, hardware inventory, we've got policy settings, software distribution, um, device-wide capabilities, depending on the platforms. We've got uh, compliance monitoring and configuration of things like iCloud policies to, to restrict um, uh, connection to that service. Um, in contrast, we, we've got a very similar set of uh, capabilities through EAS. Um, some of the settings are uh, not quite as powerful. We can't do the iCloud configuration, for example. Um, that's built just into the, um, the Intune platform. Uh, but we still manage software distribution. We can still um, device wipe platforms that support it. Um, but in addition, uh, because they're going through the email client, there is also the capability to wipe mailbox data. And that's crucial to a lot of organizations. So that's why we're supporting both platforms. We're not just saying you can go direct or EAS. We're saying, well, you can support both. Because if you've invested in EAS to date, it's still an important feature to pull mailbox data off that device. And through the EAS channel, we can guarantee that that data is going to get pulled off the device and scrub it from the device when it's retired or wiped. So that's supported in there. So moving quickly along. The first step to this is becoming the management authority. So when uh, you sign up for a trial account, the, the management authority is in a neutral state. We, we haven't decided where we want that to be. So uh, you as an administrator will go into the mobile device management console in the um, either the Windows Intune web console or through System Center and running the, um, the Intune connector through, um, through System Center. And you'll make the decision uh, to switch the, the management authority from either System Center or Windows Intune um, cloud only. 
So when you make that decision, it's kind of a one-way switch. Uh, there is, as I mentioned this morning, I think a mechanism that allows you to say, whoa, okay, I, I've gone as far as I can go with my cloud-only config. I want to switch it now to my on-prem configuration to keep scaling. Um, uh, so you can call a uh, help desk up there, the support channel, and they'll reset that for you so you can then claim the management authority for back to system center. Uh, the other way, as I said, isn't supported. So this is an important switch. If you haven't selected it yet, don't until you're absolutely sure which configuration you want. Okay. So once we've set that authority up, you then have to go through a process of enabling whatever platforms that you want to manage, whether that's RT, whether it's Windows Phone, iOS, or EAS for things like the Android platform. So um, in the, uh, the UI that we have here, we've got a mechanism that allows us to turn those on. That's a, the simple part. However, there are some additional pieces that you may have to jump through in order to support these platforms. And this is really all around the security. We wanna set up a mechanism that will allow you to securely manage and deploy applications that you trust and you validated for your organization. So going back to the slides, what I've got here is a, a table that shows you what those prerequisites need to be in order for you to manage these um, devices. So first and foremost, the infrastructure requirements. Um, it's easier on your users if you configure the auto-enrollment um, uh, feature of the service. And this is basically a DNS entry in your DNS configuration that allows the device to do a lookup to figure out which account your username is assigned to and therefore which service to subscribe to for that device. Um, if they don't put this in, and we haven't set that up in our demo environment, so you'll see we'll manually enter this URL in. It's not the end of the world, it's a simple URL to re remember, but it's, it's easier if you've gone through that step. If um, you're planning on um, rolling out any other um, uh, devices or um, configurations for uh, applications, then at that point, there are some other steps that you need to go through. If you're deploying to the iOS platform, you need to have a valid Apple Developer Program membership. I believe they call it the uh, Apple Deployer, uh, sorry, Developer Enterprise Program, needs to be set up and worked with. If you're planning on deploying uh, to uh, Windows Phone or Windows RT, uh, sorry, for Windows Phone first of all, you'll need a Windows Phone Dev Center account, and then you'll also need a enterprise code signing certificate. And uh, this is an important step to go through. It can take a couple of weeks to get um, the, the Apple um, developer and enterprise program enrollment sorted out. And it can do exactly the same for the um, enterprise mobile uh, code signing certificate. And the reason is we need to know that you are an organization. We are handing you a certificate that, that proves that this organization knows how to write code. They know that the code is secure. They're, all, you know, they're doing what they need to do to protect their own devices. So both these uh, programs go through an independent verification process. And in the case of iOS, you, you have to go through a process of um, looking up the done number for, for the, uh, the uh, company reporting that so they can track that you are who you say you are. So it's important to plan for these steps and make sure, you know, if you're already a code developer for this, if your partnership, uh, your partnership is already providing code um, services, you'll have these certificates in place already. But if not, you'll need to have these in here before you can light up these uh, uh, platforms on your service. End user experience at the end of this is they'll come through our company portal, whether it's on the RT and Windows Phone platform, it's a dedicated company portal app that we'll look at in a bit, or if it's a web experience uh, for iOS. They don't have a dedicated company portal app at the moment, um, but they can get to um, some of the functionality through the, the web browser on the device. There's uh, lots of guidance on how you set up these programs and where you get these um, certs from. So I've put links down here for you. Um, if you want to, to go to those, it'll take you through the process of enrolling and getting set up for all of these. Um, in addition to the certificates, uh, sideloading keys have caused a few, com confu uh, or a few areas of confusion. So sideloading is a different process than installing an EXE. Um, we can still do that. So if you've got a Windows 8 PC and it's enrolled into Windows Intune, we can push executables and MSIs to it all the time, no problem. Um, for RT, we can't do that. It doesn't support EXEs or MSIs. So we use a sideloading process to push these AppX files, which are the, the Windows 8 applications, to RT devices. Now, in order to light that up on um, the RT platform and on the Windows 8 platform, 
you need to have the device enabled for side loading. And in the case of a Windows 8 PC, the simplest way of doing that is to have Windows 8 Enterprise and Domain join it. As soon as you do that, then the, the platform is enabled uh, to allow you to sideload it. However, if you don't have a domain joined enterprise version, you can still do this, but you have to jump through a couple more hoops. Um, RT, if you're enrolled into a Windows Intune service, we actually manage the side loading process for you. So all you need to do is provide to us the side loading keys. Now you get those keys as part of your volume licensing service from um, uh, your EA or, or Open or whatever it is from, from Microsoft. And that allows you then to um, put the keys into um, the Windows Intune service and we just manage it all through there. So as devices enroll and then try and, um, and uh, uh, consume applications through our publishing portal, they, uh, they'll check for activation and, and it will just work. But if it's a non-domain joined PC, a Pro Edition, then you do need to put this registry key in. So if you look at the bottom of the screen here, if I highlight down here, this registry key here, that needs to be put in place. And look out for some guidance that we're working on here that actually is gonna show you how you can use a little script and push that script out as an MSI to your Windows 8 PCs to, to light up this functionality and set up the activation for your side loading uh, through the, uh, a simple script. So we're gonna push that out via our blog so that um, if you have a remote PC, maybe a home user's PC or something that you want to enable side loading on to push these apps to, then uh, you can deploy that and push it with uh, one of our um, EXEs to that device to enable side loading. All right, so very quickly, let's run through the process of the de deploying this software on these platforms. So first and foremost, deploying it to RT, we need this side loading key in place. It's a simple um, uh, uh, ID or product ID that you put into the console, and then we'll manage the activations of that in the, the back end for the RT platform. So um, that side loading key needs to be loaded in there as well as any line of business applications your developers have created, um, which are signed with your code signing certificate uh, to support that platform. Next up, you upload that all into the Intune administration console. And then once it's there and the user enrolls against the device, they can then select from the company portal the, um, the apps that you wish to deploy. And this side loading um, uh, activation or this uh, code signing key um, is checked to determine whether or not the device trusts that certificate to enable the application to be installed. All of these line of business applications need to be code signed with one of these trusted certificates. So that's the behavior for a Windows RT I, device. I will, I will kind of give one caveat there um, okay. that I did answer with one of the questions is that all applications need to be signed with that certificate and be trusted in the exception of deep linking in which case right. the in which case the application itself would have the certificate a public certificate that that windows inherently trusts in which right. case you don't need a certificate for that yeah so that's part of the the windows store the windows store itself has its own certificate and trust chain which is trusted by the rt device so uh, if you're deploying a deep linked app the reason i kind of left it out is because it really is a url all we're doing is we're passing the url to the device the device is then deep linking into the, the store whether it's the windows store whether it's the apple app store or the google play store we deep link into that and then we rely on the public certificate process for uh, each one of those vendors in order to enable the installation so Windows Phone, a little bit more restrictive here. So you have to gain access to the um, code certificate, this enterprise code certificate um, that you get through your Windows um, Dev Center account. It's a company um, account that you need. So if you've signed up as an individual with your own Dev Center account, you'll need to create a business Dev Center account that is used to get this certificate. Once you have this certificate, then um, you sign your line of business applications and in fact the, the company uh, portal is signed with the same thing. So when the users enroll the device, the company portal is installed on that device, they then use that portal to gain access to your other line of business applications. Then finally, um, in this section, what I wanted to go into is the, this is the same across the iOS platform as it is across the other hardware devices as well. Um, Apple have their own requirements in order to qualify for the developer um, enterprise program. You have your own iOS uh, requirements for the, the developers to sign the um, apps. Once those apps are signed, you upload them into our service, and then they go through a similar process of checking that certificate that they trust it and that it can be used and it's still valid, it's renewed annually. 
Um, so uh, that way you've got a mechanism for revoking if there's ever an issue with a certificate that's been uh, put out there. So um, I've talked too long in this section as I thought I might, so I'm going to skip over the demo for that because uh, you're going to be coming back to it in the unified yeah. section anyhow. That's right, yeah. Um, and uh, through the cloud console, it's very straightforward. So in summary, there are prerequisites that you need to have in place before you can start this deployment. Look at it now. The links were on there. If you go through the admin console, go to online help. We've got plenty of links in there to set you up. But go talk to your developers. See if you can find them, pull them out from an office somewhere, show them daylight, point to them and say, we need this certificate from you guys to be able to sign our apps. So uh, the company portal app is the one that you'll need to present to them in order for you to uh, upload it into the service so we can do uh, the management of that app. Yeah, and just to just to reiterate, um, you know that that's those MDM prerequisites is the same whether you're going unified or whether you're going cloud. Um, and also, the other second point I want to make is mostly all of what we've been talking about and all these additional requirements relates to direct mobile device management. So if you're going to go to just use EAS, you don't have to deal with all the certificates and all these other these other things, right? So you know, with RT, of course, would be the somewhat of the exception, right, where it's not really a mobile device per se, um, but you do need keys if you want to sideload applications. Um, hopefully, that clears things up a little bit. And uh, you know, I'm going to be digging into the mobile device setup portion on the Unified, which will give you a little idea of what that looks like in the console later. But I want to give, uh, we're, we're a little over time here, and I wanted to give a shout out to Nathan Mercer, Paul Bergeau, Jeff Alexander, and Andrew McMurray. We're, we we're getting support from the, uh, from the down under of, out there in Australia, <laughs> New Zealand. So uh, yeah, thank, thank you guys you for helping to, uh, to, to jump in and answer questions. We really appreciate it. And uh, our, fellow, our fellow evangelists and, uh, and in tune enthusiasts there. So, with that, we're going to wrap up this module. We're going to have a short break, uh, and then we're, we'll, we'll be back soon.